Hello everyone and welcome back to the Wellness Not Illness talk show. Today we are going to host a very special pioneer in the occupational therapy field. I'm sure many of you have heard of Dr. Florence Clark. Ms. Clark, who has her PhD in occupational therapy and was a president for the AOTA. She is also a professor for the Chair Division of Occupational Science and Occupational Therapy at the University of Southern California. Hello, Dr. Clark, and thank you for joining us. My pleasure. We know that you are very busy, especially nowadays with your insightful Eleanor Clark Slago lecture. Yes, thank you very much for having me. Listen, I have read your article, The Occupation Embedded in a Real Life, and I must say I was fascinated by the way you were able to treat Penny Richardson through her rehabilitative recovery. Just to give you an idea, this research was presented in a narrative analysis that provides an insight into the life of a stroke survivor's personal struggle for recovery. Professor Penny Richardson, a former chair of the Higher Education Department at the University of Southern California School of Education, had a stroke while on her vacation in Hawaii in 1989. Penny was in her middle age when she had a stroke. She was diagnosed as having a subarachnoid hemorrhage due to an aneurysm from the posterior inferior cerebellar artery. I was very interested in finding out why you chose Penny. What made you want to help her through her rehabilitative process? I've known Penny for really many years. We were never close friends, but I met her several times already. When I heard about her medical condition in 1989, I was told myself, really? Florence, you have to do something. You must go to her and help her. Even not, it's not have to be as an occupational therapist. It can be like from a touristic project. Honestly, I had a crisis in my life at that time. And I really look for something to cover that. And to really occupy myself with something else. To, you know, something to distract from my own mind. So this is what I did. I helped her. Also, at that time, I started a research at the California University. So I really was, was uh, able to involved in the process of recovery. From my understanding, in your article, you mentioned that research and therapy are intertwined. Who was your biggest influence and can you describe the main themes of your treatment method? Wow, Dr. Elizabeth Yorksa is my mentor. Oh my God, she's amazing. She's one of my biggest influencers. She received many awards for a great achievement, for a leadership in the profession. Did you know that she got the award for the AOTA? Fantastic. Your research was divided into three components. Let's talk about the first one. Childhood occupation is related to the building of adult character. Can you explain how it was demonstrated with Penny and what influenced this key point based on the current medical system in 1989? Of course, according to Yerka, my mentor, and your colleagues, in 1989, people are most true to their humanity and self when engaged in occupation. So therefore, I developed my main key points while treating Penny. Basically, particular kinds of mindsets are shaped through everyday activity. Interpretation of her childhood stories made me understand Penny's spirit and values. I learned what she cared about the most. For example, the horseback in her uh, childhood stories symbol symbolized the independence and creativity. Animals were very uh, major player in May, in penny childhood and stories. Also, writing was her childhood occupation to cope with loss. Later on, it became a way of expressing anger. Unfortunately.
It was amazing to realize, by the way, how hardworking, organized, and imaginative she had been as a child and as a young adult. As you know, every patient has important stories of childhood. Also you have, and also I have, and also our audience have, about childhood occupations that influence their mindset, influence their character, who they are now as adult people, who they are today. Therefore, this practice is called occupational storytelling, meaning the way therapists better understand the spirit and their clients. The second key point was about the big A. You state that rehabilitation can be experienced by the client as a rite of passage in which the client is moved to disability status by therapists and then abandoned. How does society play a role in this profession? And what was your insight? When patients get into the emergency room, it seems like they have no history. Based on the typical medical model, the main work of the health care practitioners is to fix the patients physically by surgery and by medications. But finally, the patient is moved to rehabilitation. Over here, according to Kaufman in 1988, the primary goal is functional independence. The ability of the patient to take care of him or her itself is without assistive devices. It's ridiculous, right? So, what do you think that they did? Yerksa and her colleagues in 1989, they were very worried that the profession of the occupational therapy is going to that direction, of which the therapist viewed treatment as machines and patients as products. Penny experience was demonstrating that medical model. That is why she felt passive, she felt mispowered, she felt that she's not quite human, she's just like a number of a case. The therapist had no time to contact with her and she felt like someone abandoned her. That is why Penny felt that she needed to set goals for herself, that she will have a sense of what her process is, where she's going, what, what, how she's going to cope in her real world, in her new self, a new self of disability that she cannot walk, she cannot walk like she used to be. This is why I made this key point. Your last key point was about the nurturing of the human spirit to act. Talk to me a little bit about how occupational storytelling contributed to Penny's recovery. The method of embedding real life storytelling was uh, intended to create a powerful implication of occupational science to occupational therapy. I gave Penny activities that would connect her to her former self. Moreover, in 1992, I began to function as an occupational therapist while encouraging her to tell her stories. She used to write stories. So the most important was to give her the skill that she will connect it to her former self. This helped her to imagine new possibilities. Nature had uncovered many aspects of her old self, but fate helped her to bring to her own world people who are care about her and want to help her and support her, like her mom, Eleanor, like myself. I, I didn't plan to be her occupational therapist. I was her friend, but eventually I was her occupational therapist. And believe me, it was the best for both of us. People with disability must push themselves to the edge of their capacity. Therefore, they need someone to guide them and coach them along the way. That is why I was here for her. Penny realized that the sessions were therapeutic because they gave her a chance to reflect on her new situation. 
Penny felt in charge for this first time, like she direct and conduct her new life. What was the most satisfying part of your research? Tell me a moment you won't forget in Penny's recovery process. Oh my God, I must show you something. Look at that. One day, Penny called me and she said, Florence, did you know what's happened to me right now? I went to the mall for the first time to shop clothes for myself, for my new self. And I forgot my wheelchair and I forgot my can and I couldn't walk. But then I said to myself, no, yes, you can. And look at that. She walked throughout the mall and she shopped her clothes. I was so proud of her. She was so proud of herself. That was the moment I said, you did your job like you need to do. Look at this. This is a big A in 1989. She was in a wheelchair. She was so desperate. She was so lost. But here, never say never. Listen to that, my audience. The new self of Penny in 1993. No can, no wheelchair. For the first time, she got her driver license. She bought tickets to opera. She even enrolled in a gourmet cooking class. Wow. But most of that, she had possessed her life in a new way. I'm proud of you, Dr. and Professor Penny Richardson. The changing nature of the healthcare system along with the renaming and reformulation of the Education for All Handicapped Children Act to the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, which is called IDEA for short, and President H.W. Bush is signing Americans with Disabilities Act, also known as ADA, in 1990. How has it influenced the profession and the society today? Well, very good question. I'm really happy that you asked that one because it's very important to know that those movements influence the access for people with disabilities in all kinds of areas. It can be like in educational system, it can be in restaurants, it can be in sports, in activities, in community activities, and even in employment. The shift in healthcare and education further influence areas of the practice as increasing numbers of occupational therapists served in school systems. Hello, I think we have someone on the line. Let's go to Haley, an occupational therapist living in Miami, Florida. She wants to ask some questions to Dr. Florence Clark. Hi, good afternoon, Dr. Clark. I'm so excited to get a chance to talk to you. I'm a huge fan of the Eleanor Clark slide lectures, so it's my honor to get to ask you this question. When deciding on what to focus your slide lecture on, what did you hope the impact of your lecture would be, and how did you see this influence on the profession today and in the future? I hope that the lecture would impact OT's philosophy and paradigms in a way that it will assist the individual in meeting his or her personal needs in order to better cope and participate in the macro, micro, and meso level of his or her society. I hope that the other patients, like Penny, won't experience disappointment from the profession as Penny described it. Also, how do you think that students and therapists can identify with the content of this lecture? Therapists and students alike can identify with the context of this lecture because every person has their own life story which shapes who they become. Just like Penny. Also, everybody wants people to take the time to get to know them before setting limitations of what they can or cannot do. Therapists and students can take this information and apply it to everyday interaction with clients. 
believe me. I widget the model of client-centered practice and the holistic philosophy will truly be the core of the occupational therapy profession. Thank you very much, Haley. Thank you, Haley, for calling in. I appreciate your questions. Thank you again for letting me contribute to this conversation. And you really made my dreams come true. <laughs> Usually teachers learn from their students and parents learn from their children. What did you learn from Penny as your client and what inspired you the most while you're working on your research? So basically, Penny embraced a comic vision of her disability. I admired people like her who chooses to wear pink sunglasses and make lemonade from the lemon. I want to tell you a story, okay? A question. There is a situation, right? Hard situation, like a stroke, like any disability. And there are different types of people. For example, someone like an egg, someone like a carrot, and someone like a coffee beans. Now, let's say that the situation is boiling water, right? If you will put egg, an egg into the boiling water, what happened? Does it boil the egg? And the egg become to be harder, right? Now, if you will take the carrot and you will put it inside the boiling water, what's happened? It softens the carrot. Correct. But if you're going to put the coffee beans inside the hot water, what's happened? Do you have ground coffee? Oh, yes. And yet, amazing aroma. So, my point is that there is a situation, right? You can't do nothing about it. But the question is how you react. So the hard, the egg become to be hard, right? It takes the situation in a very negative way. The carrot, too soft, he get mercy for himself and cry and what I will do, how I'm going to live. But the coffee bean said, one second, let's take it in a good way. Let's take it in a, in a way that's going to benefit me, my new me. And this is what Dr. and Professor Penny Richardson did. Thank you very much for hosting me. Thank you.